Good day students, welcome to mathgoserve.com and this clip we're going to be going over our virtual trigonometry text on how to apply the sum and difference identities. Now to get us started we're going to do a real quick review on our sum and difference identities and then um, we're going to take a look at the problem. Okay. All right, so let's start by um, reviewing our sum identities for sum and difference identities for sine first, and then we'll go to um, cosine. Okay, so for sine, um, if you have sine of the sum of two angles, sine of alpha plus beta, if you apply the sum identities, you have sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta okay and then the difference identity if you have sine alpha minus beta is going to be sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta okay so just something to keep in mind to help you remember the sum identities for um, sine um, first of all you, you want to note that the sine of the angles of the sine of the operation between the angles is the same thing as the sine of the applied identity. So the sines um, are the same for sine. So if you have a sum, the formula is going to be a sum also. And if you have a difference, this formula is a difference also. And then the pairings of the trig um, functions, you notice you're different, right? So they are different pairings, different pairings. All right, now let's take a look at the cosine um, sum and difference identity and you will see how this observations we made for a sine can also help us remember what the cosine sum and difference identities are. So if you have cosine alpha plus beta and you apply the sum identities for cosine, it's going to be cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Right, and then if you have cosine alpha minus beta and you apply it, you're going to have cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. Okay, all right, now can we apply, um, can we observe what's going on here and then use the tips we observed in the sum and difference identities to figure out what the deal is with cosine? The answer is yes. So if we take a look back at the sum and difference identities for sine, we notice that the signs were the same and the parents were different. Now what do you notice in the case of cosine? Plus, minus, minus, plus. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. In this case, it's like the opposite of the observation that we made for sine applies here, okay? So for cosine, the signs are different. Signs are different. How about the parents? For cosine, the parents are the same, okay? The same parents. So just by looking at the parents and the um, sign you can easily remember what the sum and difference identities of the sine and cosine functions are. Alright, let's take a look at the following example. The task is to find sine 15 degrees using the sum and difference identities. Okay, using the sum and difference identity. There's another um, set of identities that you can use to figure out what sine 15 is, but um, we're just focusing on sum and difference in this particular presentation. Okay? Alright, so let's get started. Now let's take a look at the angle we're trying to evaluate the sine of for a second. It's 15 degrees. Now, if you have your unit circle mastered, what you notice is that 15 degrees is not on the unit circle. So how do we classify 15 degrees? 15 degrees is an uncommon angle. So angles that are not on the unit circle are not common, they are uncommon, okay? 
So what does uncommon mean? Let's just write it down. It means that uh, it's not on the unit circle. So if this angle is not on the unit circle, does that mean we cannot use the unit circle to, uh, to evaluate it? The answer is no. This is the beauty of the sum and difference identities. It enables us to find the uh, six trig functions of any angle that can be expressed using the sum or difference of any angles that are common. Okay? So now the puzzle is as follows. Can we figure out two common angles, two angles on the unit circle that either add or subtract to yield this uncommon angle 15 degrees? And the answer is yes. Sometimes you can get multiple combinations, but we're going to use two that are pretty straightforward in the first quadrant. We can use 45 degrees minus 30 degrees to get 15 degrees. Okay, so what we want to note here is that 45 degrees and 15 degree and um, 30 degrees are what? What do we know about them? These two are common angles, okay? Which basically mean that um, they are on the unit circle. Now, the combination that we use to generate the uncommon angle tells us exactly what um, identity we're going to use. So since this is a difference right here, we're going to be using the difference angle. And since this is a sine, we're going to be using the difference um, angle identity for sine. All right, so let's go ahead and write down the formula that's going to guide us. So we have sine alpha minus beta Okay, alpha comes first before beta, just like A, B. So you keep track of the order, that's extremely important. In the expression of your difference, whichever one comes first, that's your alpha, and the beta is the second one, okay? So remember for a sign, the signs are the same, and the pairings or groupings are different. So we have sine alpha, the next one better be different, cosine beta, and for sine, the sign stays the same, minus cosine alpha, sine beta. All right? So now let's apply this formula to our particular problem under consideration. So sine 15 degrees is the same thing as sine of 45 minus 30. Okay? So we can clearly see how they are connected. Um, alpha is 45 degrees and beta is 30 degrees. Right, so if we apply the um, difference identity for sine, this is going to become sine of the first one, 45, cosine of the second one, 30, minus cosine of the first one, 45, sine of the second angle, which is 30. Okay, now we're going to make use of the unit circle to figure this out. Now this presentation is based on the assumption that you already have the unit circle mastered. Okay, so if you don't have the unit circle mastered, you can closely observe how we use the unit circle um, to find this out, and then you can go ahead and um, master the unit circle. Uh, we have an excellent presentation that can help you master the unit circle, and you can take a look at that so you can. Um, use the unit circle without actually having a, uh, physical access to a copy of that document. All right. So since 45 and 30 degrees are on the first quadrant, we're going to just draw the first quadrant of the unit circle. It's just a rough sketch, nothing too crazy. All right. So if you have that, this is just a quarter piece of the entire unit circle. Um, we have three points. We have the first point, we have a point on the x-axis, the first point, the second point, the third point, and the point on the y-axis, okay? So this is your uh, y-axis and this is your x-axis. Now this point right here is point 1, comma, 0. We're looking for the uh, reference angles 45 and 30 degrees, okay? So let's go ahead and um, graph those 45 and 30 degrees. If you have your 
unit circle mastered, you'll know that um, 30, 30 degree angle is the first one, and the second one is 45 degrees. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and write that down. So this one, the, this further angle, this is 45 degrees, or pi over 4. This is 60 degrees. We don't need that. And then this one right here is 30 degrees. We now have the angles. Now we need the coordinates. Now following the number pattern on the unit circle, we know what they are. We have 0, 1 half, roots 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1. This is a sequence of coordinates that um, we see on the unit circle. We know this is 1. This is going to be um, root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2 always goes with 1 half, right? So root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And then 1 root 3 over 2, and then after root 3 over 2, you have root 2 over 2. And then root 2 over 2 always goes with root 2 over 2. All right? So those are the two angles that we need. All right, so we have alpha. Alpha is 45 degrees. That's the first angle we can see here. And then beta is uh, so the second one, 30 degrees. Now, the coordinate that corresponds to alpha on the unit circle 45 degrees is roots 2 over 2, comma, roots 2 over 2. And the coordinates that correspond to 30 degrees on the unit circle is um, roots 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Okay? So these are the x coordinates. Let's change colors here. These are the x coordinate right here, and these are the y coordinates and um, we know which is which. The x-coordinates are our um, cosine, cosine theta, and then our y-coordinate is uh, sine theta, all right? So let's go ahead and specify that real quick. So we know that this is cosine theta right here, and the y-coordinate is sine theta. All right, so let's go ahead and use this little chart we have here to figure out what these angles are. Now, sine 45 degrees is the y-coordinate here, so sine 45 is root 2 over 2. And then um, cosine 30 degrees is the x-coordinate here, which is root 3 over 2. Minus cosine 45 degrees is root 2 over 2, the x-coordinate of the 45 degree point and the y sine theta sine 30 degrees is the y coordinate for 30 degrees which is one half so we multiply that by 1 over 2 okay so multiply the fractions numerator by numerator root 6 denominator by denominator and then we have here root 2 over 4 and then we can com express these two fractions as a combined fraction which will be root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your final answer. And this is how you can apply um, the sum and difference angle identities. Now, how well did you master the contents of this presentation? To demonstrate mastery, we'd like you to try out the following problems. Um, try these. The instructions are the same. You're to um, use the sum and difference identities, sum and difference identities, to find the exact value, exact value of the following. Okay, so let's say number one, you have sine of 105. Number two, you have sine of negative 15 degrees. And then number three, you have cosine of 75 degrees. Now go ahead and pause this video and try out these problems. When you're done, we're going to reveal what the answers are shortly. All right, so let's hope you had the chance to work on these problems. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the answers are. For 105, of course, you can use 60 and 45. 
your answer will be root 6 plus root 2 over 4. For number 2, you can use um, 30 minus 45, and in this case you're going to have root 2 minus root 6 over 4. And then for this one right here, 45 degrees, you could use uh, 30 plus 45. Um, and for this one, you're going to have root 6 minus roots 2 over 4. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies of um, trigonometry and some of the different identities, do give us a, a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this tutorial or any um, trigonometric questions in general, just post it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to assist you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More videos, worksheets, games and tools can be found at mathgotserve.com. Do check it out. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.